Well, it's time now to bring in our political panel, former New South Wales Liberal leader Kerry Chikorovsky and former Labor advisor and the founder of Hawker Britain, Bruce F Hawker. Thank you both for your time. I might start with Kerry first. The National Anti-Corruption Commission began operations today. Could this backfire on the Albanese government as it has backfired on some governments in New South Wales, Kerry Chikorovsky? <laughs> Well, I think the Prime Minister will be hoping very strongly that it doesn't um, backfire on him. But, I mean, from what we're hearing, they're going to be pretty busy. We have no idea what, uh, what level of complaint will actually be investigated by the new commission. But I read today that they've already received on that day one 44 written complaints, and I think it was five phone calls. So there's clearly a lot of people out there who've got um, either a peeve or they genuinely believe that there are things wrong with the federal government. Now... I know that the coalition government were in for a long time, but the Labor government's now been in for 12 months, and one wonders whether in that time things have happened which we haven't heard about that people want investigated. So, yeah, Andrew, when you set up a, a corruption commission, you need to be prepared to be investigated by it, and I think you keep your fingers crossed as the architects of it that it doesn't come back and bite you on the ass. Well, Bruce Hawker, what do you make of the reaction of the Gladys Berejiklian fallout? It seems to me Chris Minns has gone a bit soft. Well, Minns is a relentlessly positive man, you've got to say, uh, unlike me, Andrew. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, look, he, he, he gave himself a reputation uh, in the election campaign that people liked, I think, for his positivity. Um, that's, uh, that's perhaps the nature of modern politics. I don't know. It seems to take all the fun out of it from my perspective. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there you go. Uh, look, and uh, look, I think there's a lot of things to be said about that in, inquiry in the aftermath of it, and I'm sure it's all been spoken about. But, uh, you know, Kerry, uh, I think, would agree that uh, Gladys was a very popular pro Premier. I think that may have had something to do with the way in which... Uh, the bipartisan response to the report has come out. For my money, uh, I think we do have to have the searing light of an ICAC on politics all the time. As somebody who was around politics before an ICAC and after an ICAC, I can tell you, notwithstanding the problems that have confronted various politicians over the years, New South Wales is a much better place for having an ICAC than it was before it had one. So uh, Nick Greiner and his and his colleagues, including Kerry, uh, should be congratulated for having the courage to do that back in 1989. Uh, and I think we're 30 years overdue in having one in, at a federal level. Yes, and I've got the architect of ICAC, Gary Sturgis, on next hour, so stay tuned for that. Well, Kerry Chikorovsky, yep. an interest rate decision tomorrow might be good news, finally, for once, in terms of just a pause... And a record surplus on the way. Has the federal government done all it could to prevent a rate rise? Well, the problem with both those things, one, the pause, and two, the surplus, is that how does that translate into my hip pocket? And I think that's what people are really concerned about at the moment, Andrew. I mean, the, the reality is that may, over a period of time, make it easier for people to be, you know, pay their mortgage, to be paying their grocery bills. I'm not sure it's going to help their electricity bills very much. So... Are they doing everything they can? Well, there'd be a lot of people who'd suggest that a lot of the spending that they're still doing is adding to inflation. So, you know, they might be balancing that out, surplus and uh, spending, but we'll see. But I think the real problem for the government continues to be, continues to be, that for, you know, people out there in voter land, they're hurting. They're really hurting. It is hurting them when they pay those bills or when they go to pay those bills. And they are looking to the federal government for some leadership. And I'm not sure that when you talk to them about, you know, a massive surplus, that that will translate into, well, as I said, how is that hurting? How is that helping me? Is that helping my hip pocket? And I'm not sure that people see that at the moment. All right. Bruce Hawker, finally. Peter Dutton came out pretty stridently against the corporates donating to the Yes Voice campaign on Sunday Agenda yesterday, basically accusing them of being insincere. What do you make of that? Well, I think he's a bit upset that they're spending so much money. I notice that some of them are spending up to $2 million on the campaign. I think uh, in this day and age, companies have to have a, a weather eye on their corporate image. And uh, we've seen what's happened when they've gone foul of, uh, of, of that and have been found wanting. 
So I think this goes to show that, you know, amongst uh, the business community in uh, certainly the big end of the business community and sporting communities and, and opinion leaders, there's a really strong view that the Yes campaign should be supported. Uh, now, obviously, there's a lot of work yet to be done, and I think the Yes campaign is going to need all the money it can in order to promote uh, the you know, the positive aspects of, of the referendum between now and whenever it's held, because right now it's not in a very good place. Uh, but I think we're getting now to the point in, a, in the campaigning when we're going to see a lot of grassroots action taking place, and that'll be the making or breaking of this referendum issue.